This segment demonstrates how to assemble your new 85-pound Craftsman push broadcast spreader. Begin by turning the hopper, part AB, upside down. Then slide in the flow plate, part K, as shown. Then insert the tab into the flow plate. Next, assemble the axle, part AG, to the frame, part AA, and gearbox assembly, part AH. Ensure it's aligned as shown, with the holes at the end of the axle on the right side of the spreader. Now, secure it with one and one half inch cotter pin, part S, by bending the ends out. Then, press two one inch plugs, part J, into the frame. Next, slide two flange bearings, part I, onto the axle and press them into the frame. Now assemble four quarter inch by one and three quarter inch bolts, part Q, and four small washers, part E. Then align the frame, two support angles, part AE, and the hopper. Next, insert the bolt assemblies through the hopper. Then fully secure them below the frame with four quarter inch nylock nuts, part F. Now assemble the hairpin agitator, part M, to the impeller shaft. Next, align the stand tube, part AD, and secure the side with a quarter inch by two inch bolt, part A, and a quarter inch nylock nut, part F. Repeat for the other side. Now onto the right side of the axle, slide on a large washer, part D. Then slide on a spacer, part H. Next, slide on a wheel, part X, with the valve stem facing out. Now slide on a large washer, part D. Then insert a 3 32nd inch by 3 quarter inch cotter pin, part G, and then bend the ends out to secure the wheel. Next, slide on a large washer, part D, onto the other side of the axle. Now slide on a spacer, part H. Then slide on a wheel. Next, insert a 5 32nd inch by 2 inch cotter pin, part R, and bend the ends open to secure the wheel. Now insert the lower handle tube, part Y, and secure it with 2 quarter inch by 1 and 1 half inch bolts, part C, and 2 quarter inch nylock nuts, part F. Then insert the handle tube, part AF, and fully secure it with two quarter inch by one and one half inch hex bolts, part C, and two quarter inch nylock nuts, part F. Next, align the short handle tube, part AI. Now secure it with a quarter 20 by one and three quarter inch hex bolt, part Q, and a quarter inch nylock nut, part F. Then slide the handle grip, part T, onto each side of the handle. Next, assemble two quarter inch by one and three quarter inch hex bolts, part Q, and two small washers, part E. Now slide them into the control assembly, part Z. Then add two small washers, part E, on the other side. Now slide the assembly through the handle and loosely secure it with two quarter inch nylock nuts, part F. Do not tighten it yet. Then insert the control rod, part AC, into the slide gate bracket. Next, slide the other end into the control arm. Then slide on a small washer, part E. Next, insert a 3 32nd inch by 3 quarter inch cotter pin, part G, and bend the ends out to secure it. Now ensure the adjustment lever is in the off position. Then slide the quarter 20 by 3 quarter inch carriage bolt, part B, through the adjustment stop, part N. Next, slide the assembly into the control bracket. 
and secure it with a nylon washer, part P, and nylon wing nut, part L. Now slide the control arm grip, part O, onto the control arm. Then insert the grate, part AJ. To calibrate the flow control, move the control lever to the off position. Then slide the control bracket along the control tube until the shutoff plate is closed. Now loosely secure the hex nuts that fasten the flow control bracket to the control tube. Do not fully tighten it yet. Then set the adjustable stop to 5. Next, pull the control lever against the stop and verify that the flow plate has opened about halfway. If the flow plate doesn't open halfway, adjust the position of the control bracket until the flow plate opens about halfway and closes completely. Now, tighten the hex nuts.